In this last episode of the 12 Days of Defense, I want to talk about blue team jobs. What's good about them? What's bad about them? What kind of personality characteristics are the best match for this sort of job? I very, very often to see discussions on Reddit and in person and in conferences. Do I want to get a sock job or not? I want to answer some of those questions in this final episode. So let's kick off the final episode of the 12 Days of Defense. Alright, so this last video is for those who are considering a job in information security and maybe you watch the other videos and are starting to think maybe this is something you could be interested in. In this episode, I want to talk about some of what I consider to be the upsides and the downsides of this job and help you maybe make that decision as to whether you want to jump into a security operations or a blue team role or if maybe there's something that's a better fit for you. One of the things I think is most exciting personally about this job is that it is a constant, exciting, fun challenge. Every day that you come to work, there is a new problem waiting for you. Uh, and if you're a puzzle solver, this can be a great thing. You will see different malware every day. You will see different attempts to trick your employees via phishing every day. And you have to take that malware apart. You have to take those emails apart. You have to decide if they're bad or not. If they are bad, how are they bad? Why are they bad? What will happen if someone clicks on that link? Is it something that's already happened? Is it something that hasn't? So if you're very detail oriented, you like digging into problems like that and solving those issues, this can be a great job for you. I think information security attracts a lot of people who are into challenges and puzzles for this aspect. If you're the kind of person that wants to go to work every day and kind of do roughly the same thing, this is not going to be the job for you. This is a position that requires lifelong learning and lifelong building of expertise. Other upsides to this job is the pay is generally really, really good. I'll put up on the screen here some of the information from the ISC Squared Global Information Security Workforce Study that talks about some of the average salaries, the need for people in this position and things like that. The short story is the pay is really good because this is challenging work and we need a lot of people to get into this career. All around the world, there is a hiring gap for cybersecurity. Now, some people debate this and you can kind of look at this in a number of ways, but I'm going to speak from my experience as a hiring manager. I was a SOC analyst and then I became a manager of a SOC and was hiring a lot of people for that SOC. And I can tell you, finding the right match and the best person to fill that position is a challenge, right? It's not like I just have hordes of people that are going to be a perfect match for a SOC analyst role. It does take a certain mindset. And when I pull classes, when I teach for SANS, I universally find the same thing, that many managers find this at least to be pretty challenging, if not all the way impossible in certain locations, depending on where you work and depending on the industry and some of the other variables there. Overall, this is a job that has a great outlook. Cybersecurity is not going anywhere, and it's a job that you can specialize in almost any specific niche as well. If you wanna do cyber defense for a specific type of company, if you wanna work on a specific operating system, if you wanna work on a specific type or size of network, all of those options are available to you because there is nearly no end to the amount of companies that are hiring in cybersecurity right now. Now the downsides to this job, it can be stressful work at certain points. Uh, if your company is going through a large incident, the heat is on. You are there to save the company for what might turn into millions or even billions of dollars of damage. So what you and your team do and the direct actions that you take to either contain or eradicate, solve an incident will have a very, very real financial impact on your organization. If you're not into a job that can have that serious of consequences, then again, this might not be the role for you. Another downside that you might perceive of a SOC job is that sometimes there's on-call work involved. If you work on a smaller team and you don't have a 24 by 7 by 365 operation, it's very likely that you're going to have to work some on-call shifts. Now, depending on your alerting strategy and the volume of stuff you see every day, this could be everything from your constantly being called out of hours to maybe almost never. In my experience, we did have on call over some weekends and largely I never had to do anything when I was on call. So that was something that sounded like a downside, but maybe it isn't actually a problem. And that's something you can always try to ask in the interview. Am I going to be on call? How often do people actually get called in uh, outside of the normal you know, work week? How much work is there going to probably be involved in this position? 
The other thing is this job can sometimes be frustrating. As with any job, you are trying to do a very, very tough thing that can be expensive and companies don't have infinite resources. And so you will inherently be building relationships with other people and other teams in the IT organization and outside of it to try to forge those bonds and work with people to get the data you need, to get the budget you need, and all of the tools in place that you need to do the best job possible within the boundaries that you have given to you by your organization. Sometimes there's management that doesn't understand the true risk and it can be very, very frustrating as a security team to say, we have a problem here, I see the problem, I know how to fix it, but you won't let me do it because you don't think it's a problem. So some of these problems can be an issue of communication at times as well. This is not purely a job that's always head down, working, typing on the keyboard, headphones on, right? There is a people aspect to this job as well. Working with your team in the SOC and outside of it is going to be crucial to your success. Another downside I often hear people who are new to information security talk about is the high bar to get into the space in the first place. Yes, information security is a tough role. You generally have to learn the fundamentals about computing and IT and networking, and then you can move into the security space. That first jump, getting your first security job can be a difficult thing to do. But I will tell you, once you get that first job, it's usually very, very easy to go from there and continue on with your career. So if you're willing to put in the really difficult effort to get yourself to the point where you can get that first security job, your rate of information you're going to be soaking in once you get that first job is going to increase dramatically, which means you're probably gonna be in the right position to prepare yourself for other roles in the future if that's what you're interested in doing. Now back to that, that's another really interesting thing about security. You might start off in a SOC, and a lot of people do, and then they decide, you know what, I wanna try something else in security. Well, that's fine as well. As much as I love blue team work, as much as I love hanging out and being around people that work in a SOC, uh, there are a lot of folks that are like, all right, I did my stuff in the SOC, I learned a whole bunch, I wanna try a new challenge. Well, there are a lot of other roles in security. So whether you're interested in red teaming, whether you're interested in vulnerability assessment, or if you wanna go into governance and risk and compliance and auditing, there are, almost infinite subspecialties that you can go into. Forensics, malware reversing, specific operating systems, cloud security, internet of things, ICS and SCADA equipment. We have tons and tons of options. So even though we're talking specifically about SOC jobs here, the security realm of jobs is actually very large and each one of them is deep enough for you to make an entire career out of it. So if you find you don't like one of those items, you can always jump to a nearby job role that you will already largely have a very good start with and you will also have some practical experience in fighting real attackers if you start in a SOC. Ultimately, if you're thinking about getting a SOC job, which is a job that a lot of people jump into security with as their first role, I think this is going to be a role that is best for people who are self-directed learners and who are into challenges and puzzles and things like that, as we talked about before. Every day is gonna be full of dealing with those kind of challenges. And so you wanna be good at that, you wanna be excited about that, you wanna be the kind of person that wakes up every day, gets out of bed, and you're like, I'm going to be ready to go disrupt some kind of attacker's day by ruining their malware, blocking their infrastructure, and getting in their way as much as possible. You gotta be the person that's really into that kind of thing. Another thing about this job is you want to be someone who is really into computers because you will be going deep. You are going to be tearing apart network packet captures bit by bit. You are going to be reading millions and millions of log files, just looking for a needle in a haystack. It can be very, very frustrating. It can take days to solve some problems. But when you do solve that problem, it can be one of the most fulfilling feelings that you can have. And so it is a job that, although is tough, has a lot of payback and a lot of positive feelings that come along with you and your team as you solve and fix these big incidents and problems that otherwise could have caused millions or billions of dollars. So I'll leave you with one final thought. I can tell you from having hung out on Reddit and the network security and the net security students section of, of Reddit quite a bit, that there's a lot of down talk on SOC work. There's a lot of people that are like, oh, you're just churning through alerts and you're a ticket monkey and nothing is all that great. You don't learn anything. You're just arbitrarily sifting through metrics and whatever. Uh, there are potentially positions that are like that. Like with every job, there's a fun place that you can work and do that job, and there's probably a less fun place that you can work when you do that kind of job role. 
when you are interviewing, ask exactly what you're going to be doing. Are you going to be looking at alerts and saying true positive and then throwing it over a wall and then letting someone else deal with it? Or are you going to be owning the entire process? My encouragement to you would be look for a role where you are going to get the biggest variety of tasks. I have a whole other YouTube video that you can find on my channel called Virtuous Cycles. If you want to see what I think divides a good versus a bad sock environment and some of my recommendations for how to run a sock. But ultimately, this is something you should look for going in. Talk to some of the other employees. Maybe you can get them kind of out of an interview setting and find them on LinkedIn and, and message them personally if that kind of thing is possible and say like, is this something that you really enjoy and like or are they just kind of feeding me a line and they're saying it's great when it's not going to be so great. Uh, I find that most people like the job when they have a wider scope of activity and they have some autonomy to explore and learn and ultimately improve themselves in a day-by-day -day basis and master the craft. That's the thing that really keeps people motivated and interested in this kind of work. So ask in the interview, am I going to have any sense of autonomy in how I do things? Am I going to be able to get trained? Am I going to learn new skills? Or do you just need someone to kind of click a button, right? And of course they're gonna say no to that, but you're gonna to have to read between the lines and, and understand what the job really is before you take it. And that is it. We've made it to the end of the 12 days of defense. If you've been through this whole series with me, thank you so much for watching. This was a project I kind of came up with on a whim, so I hope you enjoyed and learned something from it. Uh, this is one of those projects that brought me to a place that I've never been before. I have never done YouTube videos like this. Uh, it was kind of a weird situation that I had to figure out how to navigate, and it was a very, very fun and challenging and rewarding thing for me to do. For the last time, if you enjoy what you saw here, please do subscribe because I'm definitely going to be generating more content that you will not want to miss. Signing off for the last time, this is John Hubbard for 12 Days of Defense. Have a wonderful day.